Wealth, yoga, wine. Welcome to my podcast. I'm Valerie Hill. Dream building or becoming a dream builder. What comes to your mind when I say those words? Well, Mary Morrissey teaches an amazing program that I just attended for the fourth time. It's a three-day intense program which teaches us how to build our dreams so they become reality. There are six steps, three of which I'm going to discuss. The first step is notice what you're noticing. What does that mean? You want to think thoughts that create images of your dream. Many of, many of us get caught in this downward spiral, spiral thinking, I can't do this because I don't have that, I don't have any money, I have a crummy career. Notice that and stop it. Stop it immediately. Just say, nope, nope, nope. That's I'm, I'm th- working on building my dream and here's, here's how I'm going to do that. Mary teaches us to take baby steps. For instance, if you're in a a dead-end career, you really do want to change it, well, take a little step every day. Build your dream through longing and desires. Your longing and discontent is what the second step is. When When you combine what you're noticing as far as longing and discontent, with what you're thinking, you're going to start feeling through your intuition and your imagination what you would love. And that's the third step. So those three steps combined will begin the road to building your dreams to come true. Christ Pritchett says, when we start that downward thinking pattern It takes practice to actually stop that downward spiral. Replace the word can't with can. I can find a new career. I can earn enough money. I can build the dream house. Someone who has built their dream, as an example, is the company Kira Grace. Kira Karmazin was feeling longing and discontent in a very successful career as a fashionista. She worked with Gap. She worked with Victoria's Secret as a senior buyer and a senior executive. Being a single mom, however, she was feeling a lot of longing and discontent because she wanted to provide a better home environment for her daughter. Thus, 2013 began the company Kira Grace, and her mission is to provide women with beautiful USA-made yoga clothing that is street-worthy. What makes her even more important in this culture of building your dream is that she works with women, she calls them global ambassadors and warrior ambassadors. And when you visit her website, which I will have, of course, on my podcast details, you'll scroll to the area where it talks about the global and warrior ambassadors. She is supporting women who are, com- who are committed to the practice of yoga, but also committed to serving the community of women and lifting them up out of poverty and out of uneducated environments. Here Grace also has on her website, which is a bonus, she has different programs for which you can register and they're free. It has a calendar of when they will occur. They're all virtual. One of the aspects of her company is she has words for the soul and it's 14 days of inspirational thoughts, which she sends directly to your email. I think that's amazing company, Kira Grace. With yoga, Kundalini Yoga is the oldest yoga that I have studied. I have never studied anything else. I'm a wine snob. Yogi Bhajan says that it takes 40 days to get rid of a habit. And there's certain... There are certain practices you can do to specifically get rid of bad habits. And that's on the virtual class that I include almost 
every podcast that is Shiva Rose and Guru Jagat. It is beauty secrets, but the very first Kriya that she teaches us gets rid of bad habits. Check that out. Howard Prakash, my other virtual teacher from New York, is holding a new moon class this Thursday, so that will also be on my website. The importance of a new moon is that it signifies, just like the word, new beginnings. And we are heading into the holidays, and many of us could use some new beginnings because the pandemic and some of the craziness in the world has created a lot of riff with our friends and even our families. When you practice this virtual class with Har Prakash, it's going to show you new ways to bond with your friends and with your family and create stronger relationships that are authentically caring and loving. Lastly, wine. Yes, we are in the midst of the holiday season now. Thanksgiving is right around the corner. Many people think the wines that go with Thanksgiving are your big, bold, heavy reds. That's the worst wine you can have. Number one, the alcohol is going to kill you. American Thanksgiving, our food is really rich, and it's also varied. The rule of thumb is to actually have a substantial white wine. If you want to go domestic, I would suggest a Chardonnay from ZD. Z is in zebra, D is in dog, ZD Wines. These two producers, they're, they're just really good friends who have had this winery for at least 50 some odd years. They make the quintessential style of a rich Chardonnay that's not too overpowering for our rich foods. I would also look at Robert Zinsky. Both of these wineries are in Napa. Robert Zinsky does make some beautiful Pinot Noirs that most people believe is the quintessential Thanksgiving wine. I don't. But he makes a beautiful blend, blended white, which is worth trying also. So look for that. I'll have the details on the podcast. I prefer, because I have a European palate, I would prefer a, an AOC Chablis. It doesn't have to be a Premier Cru or a Grand Cru. I would also look at something from Austria, perhaps a Gruner Veltliner. I would also maybe have a Spanish wine, a Rueda. There are lots of wines that I think are more interesting than the quintessential Pinot Noir. So I strongly suggest that you do a little research, reach out to me on my website, let me help you choose some esoteric but perfect Thanksgiving wine pairings. In conclusion, Mary Morrissey's Dream Builder program, which I have the link on my podcast details, is a multi-week program and will really teach you in the first week how to start taking baby steps to create your dream into a reality. Notice what you're noticing. Notice your longing and discontent. Ask yourself, what would you love? And Kira Grace has done exactly that. She listened to her longing and desire, and she created a really wonderful company, which is called Kira Grace. And lastly, uh, Har Prakash, her new moon, is this Thursday. I'll have that link on the podcast. Of course, your Thanksgiving wines, it's not plain old Pinot Noir, in my opinion. To wrap this up, I am not a life coach. I am not a consultant. I produce this podcast every week to help hundreds of people globally enhance their lives with three unique topics. Merci.